you're watching a decentered media talk with me rob watson conversations about community media visit decentered.co.uk or follow on instagram and twitter at decentered media Hello, uh, Rob Watson here, and this is a Decentered Media Talk, and it is the second in our series, uh, an introduction to community media. And what I want to do today is uh, talk about the idea of community reporting and why it's an essential component of and a, a, a way in which we can understand what community media seeks to do and why it's different. In the previous talk, we looked at some ideas about why community media might be thought of as a different kind of approach to media, one which is uh, grounded in community development ideas, one which is grounded in uh, social democratic ideas of uh, access and participation to media, and one which pushes back against, if you like, the kind of centralization and control of corporate or mainstream media um, that, that kind of is is what really shapes our media landscape these days and you know how community media is a, is a, a an alternative way uh, of engaging a kind of civic mutual DIY kind of approach to media <clears throat> so what I'm going to do today is go through some ideas and I've got some examples and clips that I'm gonna uh, uh, play through uh, and uh, some uh, notes are available um, if you on the uh, the decentered media MOOC, and I'll also make a transcription of the session available as well. Um, so, if, any questions, any comments, any observations? Uh, we've got the decentered media forum uh, where we can engage in discussion about different ideas re that relate to these things. Um, uh, so, hopefully, uh, we will. Um, we we'll kind of get a, 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 a sense of how this might work in practice. Right, so let me just uh, share the screen. And <clears throat> so there we go. So, uh, so we are thinking today about community reporting. And I've called these talks now rather than presentations. What's a, a more accessible name for this? Uh, they're, they're not. You know, they, they might be a bit lecturely because that's where they come from uh, when I've made them in the past. But they're, they're really just just a chance to have a talk and, a, and a, uh, hopefully prompt some ideas for a conversation. Um, so um, let's see. So one of the big problems I've got with a lot of the way that our community organizations and people who are focused on civic society and, and um, community engagement is that we tend to follow or they tend to follow a kind of mass communications model of uh, communications. And I, I find it a bit detached and sterile and that it doesn't really often, you know, when, when it's not done well, it doesn't represent the people for whom the the, the service, the group is there on behalf of, because what you end up doing is regurgitating things that are circulating merely in the media uh, uh, world itself. So you kind of get that idea that you're circulating memes and, and uh, stock images, and it becomes a bit, if you like, uh, uh, it doesn't connect with the situation, the place, uh, and the people who are involved in the process uh, and what the service is about. It doesn't tell a story. And I think one of the great things about the idea of community reporting is that you strip away a lot of the professionalization and you make it as ordinary as possible. And it's about those people who are empowered and inspired to facilitate and tell their own stories and to come up with ideas about what we want to say and the reasons that we want to say it, good and bad, uh, based on our experience in a way that's accountable, but which doesn't just rely on, if you like, things that we've already seen that are circulating within our media, uh, but you kind of go back to the source. So, you know, one of the challenges, I think, is that, you know, a lot of, a lot of stuff can look 
Uh, and I, I just grabbed a couple this morning, which we kind of on my Twitter feed uh, of communications that I think often they look like they're taken by professional photographers, the photographs, or it's a, a meme with a, a comment that somebody's already seen. You know, there's Pinterest sites full of these uh, uh, thoughtful images with a bit of text over it. And or you can look at promoting something which is just using a generic stock image when what we've got to do is invest in creating and designing our own images uh, that tell the authentic. I don't, there's a question around the world authentic, the genuine uh, story, uh, print issue of who we are and, and what we want to say. So it becomes a, a genuine statement of uh, who we are now here in this place at this time. Uh, and I think one of the advantages of community reporting is that it's much more focused on that. So um, let's have a watch of uh, <coughs> a, a short video, uh, which gives a sense of uh, what it means to be a community reporter. <laughs> What is community reporting all about? Community reporting is all about giving voice to people so they can challenge perceptions and describe their own reality. That's very different from mainstream media. We're not about news, we're about real stories from real communities and people. We never tell people um, what it is we want to produce, we just give them the tools and they go off and play with it. Can you tell us some more about the Community Reporter programme? We currently have about a thousand community reporters um, who have gone through our training programmes. We work with young people, older people, people with disabilities abilities, people whose language, first language isn't English. Um, so there's a real variety of different organisations who can benefit from community reporting um, and a wide range of individuals who can enjoy um, the programme. We've just developed a whole programme across the UK where we're offering seeing licensing opportunities for people to pick up community reporters and to run their own local programmes and we're now currently doing that across Europe with a number of organisations in Germany, Spain, France, Italy and Hungary again working with local organisations and they're developing their own community reporters programme. Our target is to have 10,000 community reporters across the UK and Europe. What type of content do community reporters produce? The content that we get is really diverse, really interesting, really bizarre. Some community reporters who just talk about cooking like a hot pot or salmon vast array of different content produced in any way that people want. They can use blogging, podcasting, video, audio, or even they might want to produce newspapers. How did you get involved with community reporting? I did a Google search for media places in Salford because I wanted to do some voluntary work. What is the main highlight of your work as a community reporter? Stuff from Manchester International Festival in 2009, going to see De La Soul, that was fantastic. I appeared on Canadian TV, national TV talking about the Salford riots, that was a quite a good experience. What skills have you gained working as a community reporter? I've gained a lot of people skills, interviewing skills and research skills. How to interview people, what questions to ask. Learning how to edit and all lots of technical skills. And to edit on Windows Movie Maker, something I've never done before. Who can become a community reporter? I'd say anyone can be a community reporter. They can be young, they can be older, people with health issues, people with disability issues. If I can do it, I think most people can. What skills would you need? All you need is very basic skills to become a community reporter. Be creative and imaginative, come up with ideas and be ready to help other people. We get away from the notion that news is just about immediacy. Actually, this is about real people and real stories. What happens after events? What happens before events? So it's not about news, it's about communities having real power to say what they want to say and in the way they want to say it. How do you get involved? I would email the content manager at contentmanager at peoplesvoicemedia.co.uk Okay, so People's Voice Media, I've, I've blogged about, uh, so People's Voice Media is a really excellent, uh, I, I love the community, the Institute of Community Reporters, kind of embodies uh, uh, all the values of community media as we've just seen in the video of community media as a uh, an, an accessible and a participation-based um, activity. And as uh, was pointed out in the video, you know, this is not about being a journalist, this is not about being a news reporter, in its professionalized sense uh, this is about um, those things and the, and, and the way in which people engage and interact in their communities 
before an event or after an event or during an event, but it's um it's the it's the longer term sense of what's going in on in our neighborhoods, in our communities, in our lives, in our family networks, in our friends' networks, in our organizations, wherever it is. Uh, but it's it's not uh it's not news at 10. It's not that kind of investigative kind of uh, confrontational kind of reporting. Uh, as we saw in the previous video, uh, the previous talk, uh, it's not just about news media that drops in and drops out and kind of drive by uh, news reporting. It's embedded. It's located in a, ne a neighborhood, a place uh, with a group of people. Uh, so. Community uh, reporting really shows that, and I've, I've done some blogging, a, a little bit of blogging about this and testing out my ability to use YouTube, uh, where I've talked about the values that inform community, the community reporting values that inform the Leicester Stories project, which I, I kind of run and facilitate uh, with the idea that the, uh, the, the, the ordinariness of our reporting and the lack of professionalization. I mean, the video from People's Voice Media there, I think it's about 11 years old now. Um, and it, it's, you know, our technology is kind of moving on at quite a pace. We're able to produce more sophisticated videos, uh, audio, graphics, and things like that. But I like the fact that it feels like it's been kind of pushed together in a kind of DIY sense, but it's, it still makes sense. And it's, mm -hmm. it, you know, it, it's not trying to be anything which is, uh, come, going to come out of an advertising or PR agency. Um, so from that point of view, it has a kind of certain uh, genuineness about it. Um, but what was said, and I think what's really important to remember is that it's about sharing local stories, uh, which are relevant to the experiences of people who contribute to a, a, a group or a neighbourhood or a place uh, based around our sense of identity. So the issue of belonging is is really important, and community reporters are volunteers, uh, so we're not looking at people with uh, professional expertise. They've got other lives to do. They're working. They're looking after families. They're they're uh, managing themselves, if you like, uh, but they're not they're not chasing after. Uh, promotion prospects or you know kind of uh, currying favor to, to to network into the next job uh, this is people who kind of say actually this is we want to give back something back to our community we want to make sure that we're represented in a way which is appropriate to who we think we are uh, which might be often misrepresented in the mainstream forms of media uh, so it's separate from that kind of professional and journalistic process because the stories that are covered aren't contentious generally and they aren't exceptional news mainstream uh, news is commonly defined as something which is either by um, uh, you know, on a, on an occasion becomes a significant breaking news story because it's exceptional, uh, or because it's accumulated in to such a degree that it it breaks a, a certain threshold, if you like, and it becomes exceptional or contentious, and there's a political battle about it, and there's a framing that goes on, uh, and we'll look at this in the future about the way that news is managed as something which is has to be an, an antagonist and a protagonist, uh, and news very much fits within a certain kind of model. And if you've got a story, a local neighbourhood story, which doesn't fit into that model, then it doesn't get looked at by any of the news organisations. So I suppose the uh, the ethic is rather than waiting for a news organisation to come and you know the, the reporter from the local newspaper or radio station or TV station, if we have local newspapers, radio stations and TV stations anymore, uh, waiting for somebody to come along to report on what we're doing, uh, even though they might have been invited well in advance, is, is a thankless task. And we've just got to get on and tell our own stories now uh, and, and find the capacity and be inspired to share our experiences and, and within our own communities and to other communities as well. So community reporting is tied closely to like the ordinary things that we experience in our daily lives, those things that get overlooked, the things that um, we know has a strong social purpose uh, because they strengthen our sense of belonging. They uh, uh, allow people to engage with one another and to live together 
um, and community reporting is kind of at that level of that you know kind of grassroots pavement level, if you like, of 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 how and why people come together in a particular um, place. Uh, or for a particular reason of their an expression of their identity or something that they're interested in, uh, so it is very much, you know, the way in which we ha- we help each other as friends and as neighbours. Um, it's how do we keep up to date in terms of what's happening? How are we getting on? Uh, are we managing okay? Uh, and you know, is there anything useful happening that we might be able to uh, take advantage of and take part in? So the the blog uh, I wrote was used for the Leicester Stories um, uh, uh, project, taking those values of community media and seeing if we can start to put it into a framework. Um, and you know that you can have a look at that. Just go to LeicesterStories.uk to uh, to explore some of the content on there. It's been quite a long, slow process building this up to get getting uh, a. a, um, a, a a lot you know, more content active on the site. Uh, and this is part of the issue about the way that we have a set of expectations about community media, uh, which uh, what will it take for people to feel inspired to actually start to create and generate and produce and share their own content. And that's, that's a different challenge, uh, but it runs through this, pro, this, 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 this particular aspect of community media as well. So the um, the Institute of Community Reporters, as I say, uh, pe- uh, People's Voice Media, are, are have this really strong uh, idea and simple idea uh, that community reporting is about telling stories which are genuine about our own lived experience, because that offers us uh, a valuable way to uh, help us understand each other. Um, and that we're describing our own realities, that we're engaging with people in a way which uh, uh, does this through storytelling. And there's certain elements of storytelling that we'll look at uh, in the course of these talks. But what happens as a, a consequence of this is people find a voice. Uh, and, they, and in finding a voice, it's then possible for people to challenge perceptions uh, about uh, say, say, for example, people with disabilities, creating and sharing your own media that can be used to uh, be, be a catalyst of change in your community is really important. Uh, but you kind of have to find the confidence to do that. And that's not easy to do, um, but it's it's an essential element of this. And People's Voice Media uh, identify the the, the, the model here that's used by the Institute of Community Reporters is that there's three stages, story gathering, story curation, and story mobilization. Uh, so collect the story, shape the story, and share the story uh, of things that we've got to do in order to be able to generate and share content. Um, and I think um, you know, looking at how we can facilitate that in practice um is really important and giving people confidence and help drawing people in building people's skills up um to be able to talk and deliberate and have conversations which form into stories uh which can be shared within a social setting and a community network so we can see this in a, a diagram which is gathering the stories uh, you know, kind of collecting things together. And we might do that. There's a, a, a million different ways. And we'll look at some practical activities of how you might go about collecting stories, uh, curating stories. So, you know, kind of how do we make sense of what's going on within a story? Well, stories often have a structure uh, and stories are often defined by certain um, types of um elements, if you like. So there's, there's a, a, a at certain kinds of characters, there's certain kinds of what we call archetypal characters that help us to understand how a story works, and there's certain patterns of the way things uh, take place in a story. We don't have to conform to that, but once we know what some of the rules are in storytelling, then we can move it forward to think about how we can get that story out there so that it can be mobilized, so that it can be useful and it can make a difference. Um, because one of the key di- key things about community media is that. Um, we're looking at how we make a difference to and within our communities, whether it's a building a sense of confidence, a sense of reassurance, 
uh, adding to a sense of belonging uh, or uh, challenging things which are, 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 are making that difficult. Um, so we, you know, we, we use these for a purpose. Uh, we use these for not just to uh, an, annoy people in the kind of clickbait manner uh, or to extract profit from people uh, in the kind of commercial, uh, uh, the hyper commercial model. <clears throat> so, so the, uh, Let's have a look at another video, which is about what, what it means to be a community reporter or what it is to be a community reporter. I'm Jo Wadsworth, I'm web editor at The Argus. For me, community reporting is um, letting people use our The Argus website to tell stories about their own neighbourhoods, about whatever they think will interest their neighbours. OK, and do you think the community reporters need an Argus? No, but I think that it gives them um, a ready-made audience. I think it also gives them a sense of pride. I like to think that the Argus brand is still strong enough in the community that they're happy to, um, and proud to be um, writing for us. And it gives a place for everyone to come together in one place to an extent as well. Great. And does an Argus need a community reporter? Definitely. We definitely need community reporters. We would be nothing without our community. And um, this is a great way of getting them even more involved. Great, thank you. Uh, I'm Paula Snyder, I'm a teacher at Whitehall Primary School, uh, but before I retrained as a teacher, because I've just finished my probationary year, I worked as a journalist for a oh, long time, more than 20 years. Good question, what is community reporting? I think community reporting is what the community needs it to be to reflect their interests and their priorities, and I think communities can set that. I'm running a little school newspaper up in Whitehall, and the children who come to the newspaper club are the ones who set the content for the paper. They decide what goes in it. They tell the head what we're doing. He does occasionally express preference. But I think a community needs to approach its reporting from the perspective of the community and not from the media. Brilliant. And um, what sorts of things do you, do you think would be useful in terms of the support that we could provide to community reporters from the, from the point of view of having this sort of project? I think looking at partnerships is always a really good idea. And one of the things I hope to talk about tonight is the way that community reporters could team up with schools and produce joint publications. Schools have access to resources that communities don't necessarily. Um, and if, it, if a school felt that a community reporting group was going to bring additional skills in, and support the children, say, in an after-school newspaper club like I'm doing, then I could see how, for example, the little Whitehawk Primary Gazette that I've been doing could become the Whitehawk Gazette. Yeah. And actually it could serve the community but be based around the school. Correct. Right, so the um, some really great things in that. Um, and the full video, uh, I'll, the link is there in the notes, uh, so you'll be able to watch watch the full video. But I kind of think the, there are a couple of key things to take from it, which is... Uh, you know, one of the differences about community reporting is that, you know, I've said you're not a journalist. So you're not there to uncover hidden truths. You're not there to investigate the things that organisations and people want to keep out of the public domain. That's the role of journalism. And that's why journalism and, new, and, and professional reporting is incredibly important because that's what the training and the skills of a reporter and the experience of a reporter uh, enables you to do to challenge um, uh, situations where people in authority or or, pe or people aren't acting in a way which is um, socially responsible. Let's put it that way. <clears throat> but we don't have the resources as community reporters to 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 do that kind of work, and so we're working in a different way and a, and a different level. Uh, so it's much more exploratory, and it's much more. Um, a distillation, if you like, a bringing together of ideas from that are shared within communities, uh, and those kind of uh, tr truths which emerge emerge through deliberation and conversation, um, or which might just be found uh, in the public domain, in in the street, in the neighbourhood, at a public event. Uh, so you're not, you know, you're not working in that kind of. And journalists maybe have a a, a, a in some ways have a poor reputation for going beyond ethical investigation, 
requirements uh, and looking into people's private data on telephones. You know, it used to be searching through people's bins, that kind of stuff uh, is often seen, certainly for individuals who are in the public spotlight as, as just, uh, you know, it's it goes too far for most people. Um, but then it sells newspapers and it's caught in that commercial uh, uh, kind of cycle. Whereas this is kind of the other way. This is about saying, you know, what can we encourage people to offer uh, and what can we encourage people to share and create and share with us freely and openly? Because there's a sense of trust within that community. So those kind of expert journalism skills aren't as important, uh, but it's still important to be accurate and fair. It's still essential essential that we have that uh, accountability and sense of responsibility of what we're doing so that if we do get something wrong, we acknowledge it. We have a, 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 a we're, we're able to be, you know, people can get in contact with us and we're able to uh, uh, think about how we can put something right if we've got it wrong. And that sense of engagement through accountability is incredibly important because this isn't just social media. If you want to you know, share your opinions with the world, there's plenty of platforms out there where you can share your indignation about things, uh, but that doesn't really help or improve uh, who we are or what we are as a community uh, because it lacks accountability. Whereas... Uh, and I'm not saying that you should just be bound by what everybody else thinks. That's not what this is about. But it's about saying that there is a knock on effect in terms of how understanding what that knock on effect is, is incredibly important. So we don't kind of just relate our personal views, uh, but we can give our views based on our experiences and, and thinking about how that interacts with other people's views and experiences. Uh, so it's that kind of coming together uh, where we share our stories, um, which is incredibly, potentially incredibly powerful. Um, so let's look at this community report from in Monmouthshire as a good example, I think, of how um, community reporting can do something which is very, very simple, uh, but for the people involved uh, is incredibly important. These are pictures of the town of Usk, showing the town, the river, which has been flowing for centuries. The bridge and children's play area are prominent. It has a reputation for flowers, as in the main square. Also, there are pictures of activities in Monmouthshire Housing Residential Complex. <coughs> I live in Capendry Close, Abergavenny, and we have a small group of people who tend the gardens and keep the outside areas clean and tidy. We have recently had a grant from Monmouthshire Housing Association and bought garden tools to make the job easier. <clears throat> a workman said last year that it is better than Linda Vista Gardens, and I think it is a super place to live. Hi, I live in Broadstone near Catbrook, just above Trellick. Well, it's about two miles above Trellick actually. There's only very small lanes as access to the hamlet. Um, it's a very pretty place and we enjoy living there com completely. All the neighbours get on very well. The gardens are all kept very pretty. The village green was donated by a local man and he also paid for the swings to go up. I mean, that's, um, uh, I, I mean, just to, to look at this uh, from the point of view of a gathering of the stories, the photographs uh, from that video were just collected from ordinary people's you know, now we collect them on our phones, I suppose. Uh, when that was made, it might have been a small camera. Uh, it wasn't anything professional, uh, which, is good, which is the way to go. You know, we don't need 
uh, uh, to spend a fortune on. I mean, let's keep professional photographers in their jobs. Um, but for a community reporter, often one of the things that we perceive as a barrier is that we're not able to achieve those kind of professional standards. Um, that's a good thing. Ten, flip that around. That we we you know avoiding professional standards demonstrates that we have people within our community within our neighborhood who are concerned about our neighborhood or the place where we live and care about it enough to make a small take a small photograph and share that <clears throat> so it's putting it together as a kind of this was a a simple uh three people re- recollecting why what their sense of belonging is about their their community speaking in their own way in their own accents uh, maybe not confident in public speaking, but you know it's it comes across as being this genuine expression of what it is that they believe is important about belonging to their neighbourhood or community. Uh, and then the next stage is to get that out and share that with other people to find hopefully that there are similar people who have a similar expectation of belonging, or actually maybe to you know help people who don't have that sense of community spirit or or sense of belonging in their neighbourhood to look at what could be learned and what what dialogue people could enter into as to how best to foster and support and grow a sense of you don't need uh, in a sense you know community report and and I'll, I'll, I'll we'll touch on the Evington Echo in a minute uh, you don't need somebody coming in from the council to tell you how this should be done you don't need somebody from the government to coming in to tell you how you, this should be done we should be you know, working as independent mutual civic society organisations that are responsible and ethical and accountable, uh, but we're not part of a national plan, if you like. Um, nobody should come round from you know the the, the local uh, council to tell you how you should put your plant pots in your garden. Uh, and, and we know it does happen, but you know, occasionally that's when it becomes a story when when those things are stepped over. Anyway. So we're thinking about the idea then of, of, of what a community reporter does So uh, and, and what is a community reporter and how does a community reporter operate? Um, oh, I seem to have flipped back. Ah, yeah, I must have pressed the wrong button, sorry. Uh, so let's have another example of community reporting in North Yorkshire. Where to get the That's a good question. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I'm passionate about the community and helping others to develop. So being a community reporter is one way that we can share and we can archive and we can uh, have a legacy for the future. She's <laughs> pretty clear, first of all, it's a colossal waste of ratepayers' money. There's a £1.4 billion pound contract for 25 years to dispose of our waste in a way which is expensive and which is damaging to the environment. It's damaging to the environment because the technology which is being proposed is outdated, it's inefficient and it's polluting. And there are much better alternatives that could be used which will have much less harm on the landscape. So we're very lucky to have a Great Usburn Parish Council plaque made about the flamingo and the story behind it and also having a Russian one which is very nice for the cultures as well so they can all be part of it. It's, I think it's a wonderful um, idea and it's great. <laughs> Hi, my name's Sarah Sayre. I'm wrecking this walk today on behalf of the Coverdale Walkers Tuesday walking group. Now we're at Caton Hall. <clears throat> we're just walking up through the ancient outbuildings. I'm going to join the Nidderdale Way. <clears throat> Hi, um, G 
just skating around East Witten. Me and my brother, let's go meet him. Borough Bridge, an historic market town in North. So again, you can you can look at the uh, full video. Uh, the link is in the notes. Uh, but I think you know it's really nice to see. And this is 2012. This was made so nearly 10 years ago now. So things like smartphones have improved. Um, people are uh, there's you know the the explosion of YouTubers of very proficient now and i'll do a separate talk about the uh the walking tour videos that i've got into um as, as a form of community media but you know it's really it doesn't have to be slick it doesn't have to be uh, uh um, sophisticated it doesn't have to be anything other than what you can do yourself that's what really matters it's kind of the willingness of people who have something to say about their place where they are who they are at that moment is what matters uh and this this is a good example of uh this i think hi guys so i'm here at the um christmas dinner for care leavers in manchester um with lovely lovely louise and the terrible katie just kidding she's great right but um yeah so what we're doing is um one of the activities is like makeup as you can see clearly so, um, nails tattoos you know pretty much everything you could ever want so we're going to do a demonstration of um, this, or this. Um, some, she can't have eyelashes done because she's allergic to the glue. What a pain in the rear end, I know. Um, can you do a temporary tattoo? Yeah, we're going to get a temporary tattoo and we're going to get some nails on her. So, where are we starting? What are we doing? We're going to do some, like, we're calling it, like, pin puppy face. <laughs> It's got, it's got a name and everything. Pin losing the glasses. Sides. Losing the glasses. Like, not like pin puppy ride. Pin puppy side. <laughs> right, okay. Does that work? Yeah, there you go. So you uh, get a clean finger and you just dip it in the glitter and then we either get for one full sweep of the face, as in, as demonstrated lovely by you, or two small. I think we're going to do two sides, sides for you. So we're going to go here, like a sweep of a little fairy. There we go. There we go. Beautiful. And then on the other side. There we go. Like you've been to Coachella. Also a very cool festival. Like you've been crushed by a fairy. There we go. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm going to just wipe my finger with it. Uh, what, right. Would you like to demonstrate having a um, temporary tattoo put on? We're doing a video. Doing a video? Okay, well, let's put it on my hand. Yes, so now. She can join the club. Yeah. Yes, so we're, we're, we're part of a cool club. We actually are, we've all got it done. Well, all, all the good people have got it done anyway. Part of the Christmas crew. So we take a. Right, so uh, again, the link is, there, is in the notes for the full video. But what I like about that video is the camera works very jolty uh the there's no sense of you know who, who it should be looking at there's lots of noise in the background but you still get this really great sense of engagement that something is happening which is yeah you know, it's it, you know how, how many people well now we know on youtube actually that people do make make a living uh from makeup videos uh this is kind of at the beginning of that people hadn't thought about doing youtube videos in that way uh now social media influencers have kind of lots of people are out there uh, uh, trying to gain an audience for this kind of stuff but at the time that this was produced it, it was unusual um maybe people are a bit used more used to that the idea of it now um but it, it again it just demonstrates that something that is is quite simple and straightforward um can be captured and shared and it gives you a sense if you were at the event but you didn't see them doing this or if you couldn't get to the event, and particularly at the moment with the COVID lockdowns, you know, we've got to do a lot more things online. And part of that means capturing stories like this, just very simple stories. How do you attach, uh, how do you put glitter on, on your face as part of a party celebration? Um, it has a, it, you know, it, it's when we look back on it now, you know, it, it is of its time, it's of a moment, and it's important that we capture that because that's how we see and make sense of changes within our communities and our society. <clears throat> so 
um, the question is kind of who who can be a community reporter, and you know, pretty much anyone can be a community reporter because you don't need any specialist equipment anymore. Um, if you've got, a, I mean, not everybody has access to a smartphone, and not everybody wants access to a smartphone. But if you have a smartphone, then you can pretty much do most of the. Uh, a fairly recent smartphone, let's say, you can pretty much do most of what uh, you would want to do as a reporter. And that would be to take photographs, capture video, capture audio, uh, maybe even do some graphics, uh, maybe do some uh, 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 changes to the the images and processing and video uh, editing, those kind of things. The more, uh, the smarter, you you know, the, the, the better quality your device is, the more it's geared up for capture and media. And people are much more used to things being captured and shared as well. Uh, I think so. It's it's there's a focusness if you look, focus for this, which is uh, really about the kind of the story of the life in the neighbourhood or the night or what's happened at an event. Uh, so there's a couple of things that you need, and you need to a willingness to focus on telling the story and a knowledge of your neighbourhood or a knowledge of the group that you're part of. Um, and that you're actually interested in what the concerns of the people who are involved in that group or neighbourhood actually are. Uh, you're not trying to bring in outside interests. You're not trying to set people up uh, to explain them in a content in a way that is external to that group of people, but it's something that is an expression that comes from within those people. Then there's a need to collaborate. So you kind of pretty much have to be part of a supportive group network for this to work uh, so if you're doing this by yourself and everybody else is disgruntled so even if say you're part of a group uh, a community group and you're interested in capturing things that you share stories with put them into a newsletter put them onto twitter put them onto youtube that kind of thing if nobody else in your group is willing to support you to share those stories then you you can't. It's very difficult to do to do that because you need people to be supportive to say, this is your this is the thing that you find joyful and encouraging. This is your contribution to the community. We we'll take part unless you know unless somebody says no. I really don't want to take part. You have to respect that as well, uh, and that's part of the accountability uh, ideas. And we'll talk about that in more detail in a later uh, talk. But, you know, people have to be willing to take part and have a have a go. Um, and, you know, to, if, if people are concerned and passionate and have something positive to share about their community, don't just leave it in the room. This is the one of the things that I think is incredibly important is that we can, like, you know, the, the example that we've seen just then of people at a Christmas celebration doing some makeup, it would be, we would be none the wiser that that happened and that took place because they didn't just leave it in the room, they captured it and they shared it. And that's that idea of mobilizing it. And I think it's important for us to get these things out there so that people understand what's going on and and, and what it means uh, and how, how we can make sense of each other's things. Because otherwise, in the absence of information, people make assumptions. And in the absence of us telling our own stories, other people will come in and tell our stories for us. Uh, but you've got to be prepared also to work in low definition, you know, low your expectations about the quality of this. Lo-fi is great. And also DIY is great. You know, just, just put it, you know, you don't need to have uh, expensive cameras. Use what you've got to hand. Use the media tools that you've got in your pocket uh, as much as possible. But it is kind of going back to that point I've just made. It's about building trust and a sense of mutual support. Uh, so that this is you know a shared activity and a shared experience, uh, and I think the overall you know the accountability comes from the idea that you're faithful uh, to uh, people and what they want to share in their lives. So <clears throat> I had a really good walk the other week with uh, uh, Helen Petman, who's the editor of the Evington Echo, uh, and there's a video that's posted up on YouTube which you can look at. We chatted for about an hour as we wandered around Evington Village. Uh, and asking uh, how the newspaper came about, what kind of stories it uh, it, sh- it, it publishes, uh, how it, new media uh, is is becoming increasingly has become increasingly important, uh, what kind of skills people need, and where the echo might go in the future. But really important was the sense of belonging to the neighbourhood, 
uh, the village, the Ebbington village, that came across as being one of you know the most important thing uh, as to why uh, any of us would want to uh, commit ourselves to supporting local community groups, uh, supporting local uh, and telling that story and being a, being a community reporter. Um, so there's a lot of information there from a, 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 a some decades worth of experience there that Helen's got to share. Uh, and and the, the, as I say, the link, the link for the YouTube video is up on, it will be in the notes. Um, but it goes wider afield than this. So this is, this, this is starting in Leicester, uh, where I'm based, uh, but also this is an international issue as well. We want the city of Canning to be a fun, safe and great place to live. In order to make decisions about what that might be, we need to work together and listen to each other. When we do this well, we call this effective community engagement. Let's talk about just what that is. When a decision needs to be made about something that affects us, we often have different ideas about what that should be. We all have different wants and needs. One of our fundamental human needs is participation, which is to have a say in decisions that affect us. So what is community engagement? Well, there are two really important parts to it, speaking and listening. It's also not one person speaking and drowning out all other people's voices. Great community engagement is a two-way conversation, a dialogue with a variety of voices heard and expressed. In effective community engagement, you're not sure what the outcome might be when you go into it because the conversation will influence the outcome. It requires speaking, listening and understanding on all sides of the conversation. At the City of Canning, our vision is to become an engaging organisation that understands community values and priorities. We recognise the need to listen and work together to co-create sustainable solutions and a city that we're proud of. Public input into council decision-making processes is key to good governance. It recognises the collective knowledge and capacity within the community to produce better outcomes. We want to hear how we can improve or create services, facilities and infrastructure. In setting the vision and direction for the city, we want to hear our community's values and priorities now and into the future, as is in the case for the Strategic Community Plan. We will also engage the community under legal requirements such as the Local Government Act, Planning and Development Act and Local Planning Scheme. To better engage our community, we've chosen five guiding principles that will keep us on the right track. One, inclusiveness and accessibility. Two, integrity. Three, communication and information. Four, evaluation and adaptability. And five, timeliness. So now I'll tell you a little bit more about what we mean with each of these. Okay, rather than going into full detail, we can do that later on the video. The link for the video uh, will be available in the notes. Uh, a few kind of phrases there, which kind of maybe seem quite technical um but it is about accessibility it's about including people and i my argument is that uh good community engagement good community participation has to include our media and there's no reason why our, our participation and engagement and community deliberation can't itself be mediated so you know don't just keep the conversation in the room share it um uh, on our platforms and networks that we've got as well because then other people can join in that conversation and can be inspired by that conversation or can draw questions from that conversation which adds to the process we should never be afraid of discussion and deliberation we should never never be afraid of uh opening up and broadening conversations uh, it's, it's incredibly important. And community media has this potential to do that. But this is why it is a, we've got to think about community media more as a community development practice or engagement practice than as a mass marketing communications practice. Uh, and I, I, just a, a really good example, I had a conversation with a colleague the other day and we were talking about uh, the stories that they were collecting uh, for uh, their project, and they described them as media assets, uh, which is something which is a term which come is used in marketing and uh, 
press and PR that you have a stock of images, a stock of content that you can use as an asset. And we, I kind of said that that's a really terrible term. You know, this is people's civic engagement and it, and it's the process of collating and collecting and using them has to be done in a different way. And you can't just see them as uh, files in a folder, in a drawer, in a, on a hard drive to be used when you want to tell a positive story about your organization, because community engagement is also about the frustrations that it means to be part of an organization or live in a particular place. So they're not just assets to be used uh, to create a spin, if you like. It's really important that they are recognized and respected as an in, in, uh, uh, with integrity. That was the key word that came out of, of that. But the uh, wider afield, um, and BBC Media Action is the charitable arm of the BBC, which does the international uh, uh, participative, uh, increasingly participative uh, media engagement work. And they, they're shifting towards a model of looking at, if you think about um, uh, climate change and inequality and uh, health uh, issues, about how we can use media to facilitate and support better understanding in uh, less less uh, uh, prosperous communities. Media and communication is providing new ways for people to connect, reshaping patterns of political information, discussion and behavior across the globe. BBC Media Action's work helps people from every part of society to make sense of events, engage in discussion, and take action to improve their lives. Last year, we partnered with over 100 media organizations to make more trusted, inclusive, and independent programs. مع الكادر الكادر البي بي سي لما كانت هذه النتائج الطيبة شو شي خطط الوزارة لتأهيل المعلم حسب التدريب المعلمين هفد ما بيدربوا بالمدرسة الحكومية يعطيني في هناك خطة لتطوير المعلم يعني إن خلي الجمهور يعرف إذا هذا حكي موجود هذا ما نعمله في برنامج شباب البلد وأيضا أسهمت في خلق جيل شاب أيضا قادر على الغوص في هذا الحوار ذات المسارة अमले नगरी बहुत सुधिर गोष्ट की पुतिची अमले यो कालिंच जोक सामने के रिड्यूले पांच सौ बरस का आवधि में छह बरस का आवधि में मतलब यो नपाक पहचान डेढ़ बरस का आवधि में पाए को छह रा यहाँ को नगरी कर ली यहाँ को जिम्मेदार अधिकारी कर ली थी कालिंच जोक ऐसे मन्ना बुनी नगरी बहुत लाजी वाले तेहरी तीन दो we work at scale. Last year, programs we supported reached over 100 million people. The programs empower people, open up space, and influence those in power. We've seen the audience start their own WhatsApp groups, online discussions, and young people like me vote for their first time. After Niambie, I knew that it's, it, it is my right to participate in politics. People who listen or watch BBC Media Action's programs know more, discuss more, and participate more in politics than people who don't. We have the right to ask our councillors, our MPs, to fulfill their promises. People. Okay, so the um, again, the link to the uh, this video is online, so you on, on the notes, so you'll be able to watch it uh, in its full length. But uh, you know, one of the issues with BBC Media Action, and this has shifted over the last couple of years, I think, uh, particularly around the pandemic, uh, is the idea that you have a group of experienced and professionalized producers who create content which reach people at scale that was a phrase that was used in the video uh so it's it's, ma it's still within the mass communications model um and there is some um uh, pushback uh about this i did a a video uh with some colleagues in a, a blog of uh, discussion with some colleagues in uh um uh, where was it? It was, uh, uh, it was in India, yeah, and uh, <coughs> and uh, uh, Bangladesh, and um, and and they were a bit frustrated that BBC Media Action still takes this top-down approach. And what they were arguing for was that they 
work with and run the local community radio stations and it needs to come from the bottom up uh, but that takes a lot more work in terms of putting skills and education and building the capacity to do community engagement and community development so none of this is easy uh, and it sounds like it's easy to shift from from community from broadcasting and mass communications to community media but it's not uh, and, and partly this is the reason why it's difficult to get community media into the wider policymaking process is because understanding that shift about empowerment and about um, capacity building and about development uh, with and using media is often drowned out by people's expectations of what uh, community develop community communications can and should do. Uh, and the starting point is, participation and access and self-governance uh, about how those that media is used, being in control of that media rather than it being decided for you. Uh, but I think the work of BBC Media Action is great and uh, and, and they, they, you know, they're, they're, they're a much needed organisation that I think if we imported some of the values and some of the core approaches into the UK, uh, we might be uh, uh, in a better position sometimes. And this is really a live issue because uh, my experience recently is uh, is that BBC Radio 5 Live came to Leicester and did a day of action programming. And I, I wrote a blog about this. I was quite critical. And there's examples of the content that they produced uh, on the blog. Uh, it was, you know, the, the, at worst, it's drive by. Uh, reporting, you know, they kind of come in and come past. They go, they they come in and go out very quickly. Uh, it's also the sense that it can be accused of poverty tourism, and and it's not solutions based. And there is a move within kind of journalism to uh, focus on a solutions based approach, where you don't just come in and highlight what the problem is and then leave people dangling at the end of a kind of a fairly negative. Uh, message you demonstrate and show what the solutions are and where the, the answers are to be found and the problem with media that is produced from the top down or or or, or distantly from the communities who are affected by a particular uh, social issue is that there's no engagement there in the long term to provide solutions or to connect people uh, with who who would help and would be able to provide the solutions so i kind of uh, you know i'm i'm quite skeptical and you know we we have the right to be you know uh, critical i pay my bbc license fee, fee uh, even though i don't watch or engage a lot with bbc uh, media much anymore um but you know i expect more in terms of community engagement and solutions rather than just banter and and um fairly fatuous kind of personality uh, um, self-promotion um, but you might have a different view and I'm <laughs> happy to have a conversation about this in the I've, I've expressed my view on this um, and let's have a conversation in our forum um, so it's community reporting then is kind of it's less formal than than uh, new than than professionalized news media uh, but you know, we have to maintain that focus on it being accurate and fair, uh, but it can be creative in the way that it's made and it can be creative in the way that we tell the stories and produce the content. It doesn't have to do, be done via uh, the, the expectations of uh, mainstream professional broadcasters. There are a million ways that we can tell stories. Nobody has a monopoly on how we can tell a story or capture a short story or share a story. And we're using maybe one or 2% of our ideas by just sticking to the same kind of um, centralized network-based model of mainstream mass production of media. And we, we need to start exploring and experimenting and bringing new people in to develop those ideas, because that's where we're going to find out what kind of, you know, the rich ecosystem uh, is very diverse. Uh, and there's, the, you know, in a city like Leicester, for example, if you can't find community related stories as a journalist or reporter, you're really not in the right business because there's 350,000 people live here. Each has a unique story that they can relate and you only have to you know, tap into that. What makes that news uh, is might not be apparent as individuals engage with that process, but it becomes apparent when it reaches a certain tipping point for it to become newsworthy. And I think, you know, so it plays a role in the news ecology as well. The community reports and underpins the news 
uh, layer, if you like, which gets those to those exceptional events or those controversial events. Uh, but you can't have an active citizenship without having active community reporting and community engagement through our media. And crucially, to do that, to make it, to do it with integrity and to do it in a way which is deliberative and inclusive is people have to be able to participate in telling their own story and participate in the governance of the community media organization that they're engaged with as well. So in that sense, these stories are co-produced and shared, not investigated. Um, so here's an example from Bristol uh, about the um, uh, a story which was about selling community uh, sorry, council, council housing, which has some resonance. I tried to put up the papers from Neva yesterday. But... Okay, so today, uh, Wiser UKG has come down to the uh, council housing protest to start. Uh, try and stop the selling of 15 council houses. So yeah, basically we're here protesting today to try and stop the sale of the council houses because they're selling off our council stock while uh, there's a lot of homeless people in Bristol right now that really need help. So yeah, we're here. And as, as predicted, here come the police. The police are now here. I've got the... Um... So, so it doesn't maybe give you the full story. It doesn't give you a balanced picture of this of what was going on, but it certainly gives you a sense of immersion in the event and what took place. Um, and there are some ethical issues around uh, things like using people's visual images. Just be clear with people that you're shooting uh, content. Uh, again, people are much more used to it, but you know there are children present, um, and you know it, it's it's don't assume. Um, is, is as a reporter, again, we'll, we'll look at this in a bit more detail in some of the practical uh, discussions that we'll have about this. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it, it gives you a sense of, you know, that people are out at least um, and that these changes by local authorities aren't going just, they're not being ignored. Is that there is a presence there? What was interesting at the beginning of the video, and I've forgotten this was on there, was was the titles that the the uh, the guy had uh, had put on there. And it, it looks like he comes from the kind of club and music promotion scene, uh, so it's got a very heavy kind of beat to it. So his his work might mainly be in other areas promoting music and events. Um, and Bristol's got a strong, you know, kind of counter counterculture scene, um, and so. Uh, but that's that's an expression of self identity, and yeah, it doesn't fit your kind of traditional news um, model, uh, report model. Um, but it, it, you know, it's an expression of you know this is something this guy is passionate about and cares about, and that other people should be aware of. Um, the technology changes as we as as we progress, and people can live stream things via Facebook now. Uh, so the, you know, it's we're seeing a broadening out of this. What I would uh, hope is that you know any kind of uh, community reporters working to let together and working collaboratively work out what their editorial policy is, work out what their safeguarding policy is. You know, have a complaint policy, uh, register maybe with something like Impress, the uh, independent media regulator, uh, because I think it's really important to be accountable and to demonstrate that you 
uh, uh, are operating on the basis of certain values, uh, which are not just an expression of indignation of individuals, but which are there to be uh, something that can be com communicated and explored in the public domain for people to make their own minds up about it rather than, if you like, being conspiracy theories or being told what to think as in, in the form of propaganda or marketing or spin. You know, it's, it's really, there's a balance, there's a place in the middle, and that comes from experience and it comes from practice of doing things. But it doesn't mean that we shouldn't go out and try and learn. So we need to. Um, <clears throat> so um, one of the, uh, the, you know, the wider issues then becomes about um, what role this plays in uh, our uh, wider democratic development and our wider civic participation and engagement. And again, this is something which is practiced and, and promoted and supported with BBC Media Action internationally, uh, but not necessarily here in the UK. And this is an, an area of concern for me uh, that we, we don't use our media within our civic society model. Uh, we don't use... Um, we don't have a participative model of media for community focused communications. We're still driven by the kind of marketing top down uh, transactional kind of view. Um, but let's look at this. Actually, people who are affected and people living in communities, local organizations, they're usually the first responders anyway. And quite often what they think needs to be done may or may not match what the international folks think. If we listen, we will perhaps not come with our lorry loads of stuff. You <laughs> If you communicate with people in need and local organizations, you start to see there are partners on the ground who we as outside partners need to be supporting. If we know what already is there, we can make a judgment. We, the international community, do we need to be there? In what capacity? We still tend to fall back into the trap of we need to communicate with affected people so that we can help them better. It's actually about changing that dynamic. We need to move from the help providing support with material, etc., to the support you know, to enable local actors to little by little actually take on much more themselves. So I think there's still a mindset shift that still is needed. Okay, that's quite an important point, I think, is that the purpose of community reporting, um, want, you know, when you go beyond um, just sharing the report, this mobilisation uh, uh, moment, uh, what what is that for? What is what's the reason for that? And it's to make a difference within our society, to make a difference within our community. What kind of difference are we looking to make? Uh, so it might be we might be producing something which is very effective and confirms who we think we are and what and and serves the needs that we think we need we need to serve. But when you step outside of that, you start to realise that actually there isn't the engagement with other people within our community. Uh, so we can become a self-reinforcing bubble, if you like, whereby we're, 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 we're only uh, demonstrating um, a limited level of effectiveness. Um, and, you know, it's not, a, not an easy thing to do. You know, there, there's a kind of balance, if you like, between those people who think that everything's wonderful, those people who think that everything's terrible, and those people who think that, well, you can't change anything anyway, so why bother? Uh, that kind of fatalistic uh, uh, point of view. But actually, what goes behind that? You know, what? How do we draw out what people are thinking or, or what their needs are? 
in a crisis situation, yes, we have to make some immediate decisions and we have to rely on certain um, tactical um, uses of media and communications. But I think with the pandemic, for example, no support for community reporting, as far as I'm aware, um, we, we largely uh, have relied on a top-down mass communications model of, commun- of, of reporting and uh, uh, information provision. And very little has been done to support community media organisations um, to, to go beyond uh, the, 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 the typical model of just regurgitating centrally produced messages. You know, it's kind of Soviet-style information management. Very little that has been related to uh, uh, engagement and about participation and about really listening to what the needs of individual communities are. So we we might look at somewhere like Nepal and think, oh, well, you know, why is this relevant to us? Because we have a and have been living through an emergency situation for the last two years, and we're and we're in that place where you know we've got a lot of things wrong, and our communications has not helped with that. And we've thrown a lot of money towards our communications, and because we didn't have the community communications infrastructure in place beforehand, we're having to rely on a very narrow set of uh, pathways or systems uh, which are designed for a different kind of purpose. And and partly this is resistance to change is because, you know, the messenger isn't trusted or the messenger isn't the right, uh, forming the right kind of message in the right way. For example, and I, I may say this on a number of occasions that, you know, people were shocked in Leicester at the low levels of English literacy skills. Well, English is not, for many people in Leicester, about 30 or 40% of the population, English is not somebody's first, like their first language. It's their second or third language. Uh, and so they don't watch the BBC. They don't watch ITV. They're watching uh, international channels and uh, uh, feed, you know, YouTube um, rather than watching local news. They don't listen to BBC Leicester. And people were shocked by that. Uh, so we have to work in a different way uh, when we're the support and infrastructure for community reports and has to be, it's only as good as the, uh, you know, it's, it, it, it's the a gardening principle. Uh, you know, it, you can plant an amazing flower uh, uh, but it's only as good as the soil it's planted in. We have to nurture and tend the soil so that it, it supports a, a, a variety of, of plants and flora and, and insects and uh, different, dif- different wildlife, rather than just thinking that we just need to plant one object there, which is the centralised information communications network. You know, those days are, are, are behind us, I think, uh, of just having three channels. Anyway, so this is ties in with uh, an idea about deliberation and and where you know this goes in terms of the wider ramification of a healthy a healthy civic society has a healthy level of deliberation and uh, engagement uh, and it's questionable here in England that we've invested in that kind of level of engagement and deliberation we don't use things like citizens juries and panels uh, we don't have a strong community media sector um but David Baum, the, uh, the nuclear Nobel Prize winning nuclear physicist, spent the latter half of his life uh, and career talking about dialogue and the role and purpose of dialogue and the ne- need to encourage listening and to respecting other people's point of view and suspending our own point of view, uh, but also giving voice to the things that matter and are and, and, our concerners. So a reciprocal process of dialogue uh, is transformative, what Bob argues, and that, you know, we can be liberated from our present um, frustrations. And those are elements where we are locked into a, a narrow uh, view of ourselves or a, view, a narrow view of what our problems are. Uh, we kind of having the confidence to enable a process which allows us to step back from that and include more people in the process and as a dynamic process, as an ongoing process, it can't just be a one-off. You know, it's, it's frustrating that you can get funding to, to run one-off events often with, with community media, uh, but you can't engage in a systematic process of, you know, a, a 10-year process of community dialogue through and with community media. And that's the kind of thing that we need to put in place and to support and facilitate uh, in order to be able to make this much more effective. 
so the, the the dialogue based model is really important and uh, 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 an element which will come out of our discussions later on. Uh, so just to we're close to finishing off a um, couple of, couple more videos just to play through. And this is one. This this introduces if, if, again. It's a few years old. So it's probably been superseded by some some better videos, uh, some more up to date videos. But it's about the Bristol Cable and why it's in. Um, it, people have supported it as a as a form of community new, community informed and community engaged news. Oh, press the wrong button. <laughs> The Bristol Cable is a newly forming citizen media cooperative created, owned and produced by people in Bristol. The Bristol Cable will be a real and direct alternative to current mainstream media. We decided to ask people in Bristol what they thought of local media. Do you think that you can trust local media? <laughs> Well, yeah, I'm increasingly untrusting of the media and um, I haven't actually bought a newspaper for as long as I, well, the last few years. We, we're supposed to be a free country, and, but we're not. You know, so many things get clamped down and you don't see on the news, you don't see on the television and uh, you, you don't know because it's not there. Um, I don't think the media in Bristol is particularly truthful. Yeah, well... Citizen media has played a crucial role in the exchange, empowerment, free flow of ideas and information. Cooperatives from factories in Argentina to traders in Bristol have shown that democratic structures are an effective alternative to corporate ownership. Citizen Media Cooperative, the Bristol Cable aims to provide a real and direct way to gain skills and promote interest in ideas and information. As a collective, we will ensure an accountable, engaging source of local media, giving fresh takes on important questions by people just like you. Absolutely, I think there's a desperate need for it, especially on a local basis. Um, there definitely is a need for it. I think, that's a, I think that's a fantastic idea. The words coming from a person that you can relate to, I think it will be a lot more powerful. People hide behind the media's like name, like tabloids, they just hide behind the, the brand name, and yeah, then they're not held accountable to what they're saying. Really important, uh, being able to identify yourself within your media, you know, people like ourselves in our media. Um, it, it's crucial to bring about the, one of the most positive ways to bring about change. The most important ways to bring about change is that when the people who are uh, uh, portrayed or or in need of help, support, change, hear, listen to, and identify with somebody like themselves. So they're not being spoken to, they're not being talked down to, they're not being spoken at, but they are being spoken with somebody like themselves. And I think that's the democratic element of what community reporting uh, seeks to do and seeks to achieve. Uh, again, the link for the full video is available on in the notes. Uh, and in Leicester, uh, the, the, you know, Leicester's not renowned for its independent news uh, uh, culture, uh, but I check out Google the Leicester Citizen, which is um, uh, Reese. Um, oh, I'll put the link in the notes, but uh, the, it, it's it's establishing itself as a independent, community focused news journalism, but with that journalism element in, in there uh, of investigative reporting. Uh, and I think it's incredibly important that uh, organisations like that, uh, emerging organisations like that, are supported uh, and giving given our um, give, given our um, our full backing. So. Uh, so, in summary, um, we have to think beyond the kind of mass communications model and many community organisations, charities, mutual aid groups, civil society groups, pol political groups still think in terms of that kind of mass media transaction. Um, you know, it's kind of like there's an input and an output or there's a, 
uh, an, a, an encoded message and a decoded message. We kind of need to kind of lose lose that model. It's still important in some respects, but you know, for our community development and our social positive social change uh, mindset, it doesn't work. It isn't practical. But what we need to put in place takes a lot. It's more fragile and it takes longer to be able to support and develop it. Develop. Um, so it's about creating spaces, creative spaces outside of mass media that are open to alternative agendas. Uh, again, you know, driven by values, the values of, for me, values of inclusive, inclusivity, uh, participation, social dem- democracy. Uh, if you want to do something which is exclusive and uh, uh, partial and um uh, negative, socially negative. I'm sure there's plenty of platforms for you on community media and you'll find your audience. Uh, but, you know, this is about empowering people within neighbourhoods and communities to come together to share uh, and develop a sense of mutual self-interest. Uh, so community media, community reporting is driven not by gain, but by care. Uh, we care for our communities. We care for the people who live in our neighbourhoods and we want to see something better. Uh, we want to see some some nurturing of the talents of the uh, uh, provision of services so that we can live, uh, uh, maximize our well-being and live uh, essential uh, human potential uh, li- uh, li- lives. So it's about inclusion within that potential for, in- for, for development and growth rather than exclusion. It's about being progressive in the sense of not suppressing people. Uh, so it's about being open and exp- enabling people to explore ideas and to develop their thinking. And it's also about um, contributing to the renewal of our communities rather than just extracting from it and taking value out of our community, which is so much of the model our mainstream media model is at the moment. And I'm always drawn to the uh, the words of John Ruskin uh, at this point, who's the 19th century philanthropist who argued um that you know the art and craft movement uh, was that you know it's not what we gain that we should concern ourselves with uh, when we tell our stories, but what we become in the process of doing that. Uh, and to be a community reporter is to become something more uh, than uh, somebody who just worries about what you've gained and accumulated. It's important to make a living. It's important that we find a way to pay for our community reporting, our community journalism and our community news. It doesn't exist for free, um, but essentially uh, those who are involved become better people uh, is my, my my aspiration and my hope. Uh, and anybody who's drawn to this is also probably of a similar kind of uh, a mindset. So the, uh, so the notes for this are... Um, <coughs> The notes for this are up on the uh, MOOC and uh, 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 it's available for discussion on the forum. Uh, if you've got any comments that you wish to share and exchange, uh, you can also use social media. So that's uh, Twitter and Instagram is at Decentered Media. Um, but thanks for listening to this uh, discussion. Uh, I've no idea how long I've been talking, uh, probably far too long. Uh, time for a cup of tea. Uh, and hopefully uh, we can reconvene for our next session uh, uh, fairly soon. But take care. You've been watching a Decentered Media Talk with me, Rob Watson. To find out more, go to decentered.co.uk or follow on Twitter and Instagram at Decentered Media.